carnivore, keto, or paleo. People that go against the grain tend to gravitate towards one of these types of diets, and the one they choose usually relies on how strict they're willing to be or how severe their health problems are. It would be fun to include the vegan diet in this discussion, but it's so different from these specific diets, and the downsides of a vegan diet are very well known. As with any dietary movement, unfortunately, there is money to be made and all of these dietary communities have been corrupted and infiltrated by corporations trying to sell certain products, twist the ideas of the diet to fit their marketing schemes. As a result of that, none of these diets accomplish complete human health and nutrition, but they do check some boxes off. It's important to understand these special interest funded diets as that explains why none of these diets hit the mark. If they worked, people would be healthy and there wouldn't be much money to make. We know what it takes to be healthy. Remove all of the negative lifestyle factors and optimize the positive lifestyle factors. Eliminate pollutants in food and water, reduce exposure to Wi-Fi, electric and magnetic fields, and remove lifestyle stressors. Incorporate and balance the nutrients in your diet, follow a consistent exercise routine, and get plenty of sun. Let's see if any of these diets check those boxes. Starting with the carnivore diet. And the general understanding of a carnivore diet is beef, salt, and water. You know, they coin the mantra, eat meat, drink water. And most people are just eating two or three pounds of steak or ground beef every day. The pros is that it removes inflammation and likely removes pretty much any single inflammatory factor in your diet, barring allergies and intolerances to low quality animal foods. You know, you can still be allergic to the crap the animal is fed, like corn or soy. That's part of the reason I can't eat chicken. Uh, it's very simple and it's easy to start. You know, you just eat meat. That's why a lot of people like it and that's why, you know, the carnivore diet has taken some hold. Cons, it doesn't address food quality. Uh, particularly omega-6 and estrogen concerns. It doesn't address nutrient intake or imbalances, uh, which we will discuss. And a lot of people have issues sleeping or gaining weight. And then you have the energy ratio issue, which is the fat to protein calories in the diet. And the reason most carnivores gravitate towards beef is because conventional pork and chicken is a bit more poisonous. You have a very high omega-6 intake, which causes an insatiable appetite, oxidative stress, plus a focus on muscle meat means a lack of certain nutrients, as well as an incredibly high protein intake that can cause insulin problems. That, combined with estrogen contained in feedlot meat, makes it a recipe for weight gain, hormonal issues, and a lot of the problems that most people see when they go on the carnivore diet. So we've covered most of these concerns in depth in past videos, especially omega-6, estrogen, weight gain on the carnivore diet. From a nutrient imbalance perspective, there are fat soluble vitamins and minerals lacking, but the bigger concern is the copper to zinc ratio in the diet. Definitely watch my videos on iron overload if you want to know about that. I've touched on the fat to protein ratio in my how to add fat to your diet video. You know, the carnivore diet being so simple and not specific, you know, it's hard to address all of the elements of a diet you need to be healthy. One of them being, you know, about 80% of your calories need to come from energy, carbs or fats in order for you to feel ideal. Uh, I'll address the sleeping issues in a separate video as that is a bit more involved. Uh, but for myself, Following a primarily beef carnivore diet, six years almost killed me. You know, the initial few years were going good. Then around that six year mark, the copper to zinc imbalance came in. And at this point, it's been taking me months and months and months to correct the problems. I'm still not sleeping properly. I still have low energy levels. So overall, the carnivore diet can get people to incorporate more meat into their diet, increase their protein intake, and fix hypothetical B vitamin deficiencies. It may even improve disease states for some people, but by no means is it free from inflammation and it doesn't have enough nutrients to be sustainable over long periods of time and not just enough nutrients. It doesn't have the proper ratio of nutrients. It's not that the carnivore diet lacks like nutrition as a whole. It's that it doesn't have enough copper. You know, there's copper in the diet. There's this mineral. There's that mineral in the diet. The ratios are not correct. Nose to tail 
fit and grass-fed meat doesn't counter this either, as those are marketing terms used to cleverly sell people products that are typically not as described. The majority of my clients aren't actually carnivore, as my main focus is to increase the quality of animal foods in their diet. And a carnivore diet is never the first thing I recommend to people. I've been consulting people for a couple years now, and even when I first started, it was never about carnivore. I don't think I've made that clear enough throughout the years I've been on YouTube, despite following a carnivore diet myself. What about keto? It focuses on eating fat while limiting carbohydrates as well as protein. That puts our bodies in ketosis. When you look at ratios, it's usually around 80% fat, 15% protein, and less than 5% of the calories from carbohydrates. If you guys want to understand what ketosis is, I did a video explaining just that and why it's not actually too important. Pros of the keto diet are it reduces the carbohydrate content, but the reason that's a pro is because people are usually eating processed crappy carbohydrates. It can counter insulin resistance, but insulin resistance is being caused by other things in the diet. And it's simple and easy to follow. And you know, the carnivore diet is arguably simpler because you just eat meat, but it's restrictive. The keto diet isn't nearly as restrictive. You know, some people even eat pasta a couple times a week or every day. The downsides of the keto diet are it is a band-aid to that insulin resistance because you know once you start eating carbs again, even if you're eating high quality food in some cases, unless you fix all of the lifestyle factors, you know, you're kind of stuck following the keto diet. And it does drag over the food quality issues and the nutrient intake and imbalance issues that a carnivore diet does have. And to me, keto is kind of like the easy way out. All you basically have to do is keep your carbohydrate intake below a certain amount. You know, compared to paleo and carnivore, as I said, from a restriction standpoint, it's a cakewalk. Thing is, insulin resistance is a combination of more than just diet. So these people are basically saying they would rather not eat carbs than change their lives. You know, whether that means spending more money on food, exercising more, you know, reducing stressors in their lifestyle, a bunch of other things. And I can't blame them because the understanding required to do those things is much greater than simply restricting carbohydrate intake. The keto diet, you know, has those similar negatives to the carnivore diet, but I would say they likely get more omega-6 than carnivores you know, because the carnivores are sticking to beef and the keto people do tend to indulge in nut butters, bacon, pork, chicken, the high omega-6 fats more and they're focusing on consuming more fat, but their protein intake is lower, so they're likely not getting as much estrogen from feedlot animal products. That being the majority of keto dieters, of course it can be done in a healthy way. You know, if you were to eat mostly whole foods, meats, animal fats, vegetables, kind of like a paleo keto diet, you know, just like a carnivore diet can be done in a healthy way with really high quality pasture raised meats, raw dairy, and proper supplements. Overall, I think the carnivore diet might be a little healthier because it does remove inflammation and fix some B vitamin deficiencies. It does have a higher estrogen content and the high protein intake can promote insulin issues and weight gain, but I still think it edges out the keto diet for most people. And I think we would all agree that neither the ketoers or the carnivores look particularly healthy. I mean, at least the carnivore people aren't as heavily overweight or obese. Uh, they do have notoriety for having coffee, adrenal stress, keto eyes. Uh, well, I guess they're called keto eyes. But the point is, neither of them look good. And guys, no, I don't enjoy making fun of these people. But you have to understand, the majority of them are special interest funded. They are guided by corporations and people trying to make money. So if I can make fun of these people for looking like crap, partially because they aren't being truthful, I'm gonna have at it. So on to paleo, which I personally think is the healthiest mainstream diet people end up following. Basically removes grains and dairy, so all you end up eating is meat, fish, eggs, and vegetables. Pros of the diet actually does remove inflammation. You know, the carnivore diet can remove inflammation, but Paleo has a lot of like autoimmune protocols and GAPS stuff where it also focuses on removing allergens. It emphasizes quality 
which means you know no estrogenic feedlot beef concerns, uh, less omega-6 concerns, less processed food concerns, and it translates to the lifestyle, which I really enjoy. Uh, the people that go paleo tend to adapt a healthier lifestyle, which actually in turn makes it more difficult to sell them products. The main problem with paleo is the variance. You know, you have some people following almost like a conventional standard health version of the paleo diet, which is like lean meats, sweet potatoes, lots of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. And then you have the person that's like chowing down fatty grass-fed ribeyes, maybe even putting some grass-fed butter in there. And that also ties into the, the paleo foods, you know, those moms making 30 ingredient paleo brownies. You know, so there's quite a bit of variety. We don't really know what people are doing, but it's safe to say that the optimal version of the paleo diet, which a lot of people do follow, is actually a really good diet. You know, from a conceptual standpoint, it's completely correct. It's just to sell products and fit modern food access, they had to skew things a bit. You know, if we were eating wild animal and plant foods like our ancestors, you know, we would be perfectly healthy, but that's not what we can get at the supermarket. That's partially why I'm carnivore. I can access high quality animal foods, but plant foods, not so much. You know, the beef we're eating, if it's 100% grass fed, is somewhat reminiscent of what our ancestors used to eat. The same can't be said about a sweet potato. You know, we have to ask ourselves, is eating pounds and pounds of sweet potatoes per day, tablespoons of nut butters, all of these seeds, is it really paleo? You know, is olive oil or coconut oil paleo? If you think about it, it's really not. That being said, without a doubt, the paleo diet blows these other two diets out of the water, mainly because it does avoid low quality feedlot and conventional products. They do say grass fed, you know, a lot of the times they focus on wild fish, local organic produce. So I can't really speak too negatively about the diet. You know, there's certainly some overlap, as we said, with the keto nonsense recipes, you know, artificial sweeteners, almond flour stuff. But if we take that out of the picture, we're good to go. So if I had to point people in the right direction to get started, if I had to choose one of these diets, it would be paleo for sure. That was actually my first step after my bodybuilding diet. I mean, all I really had to do was stop eating rice. Then I transitioned to keto paleo, uh, which was basically carnivore around seven years ago. But where did all of these diets get corrupted? Where did they go wrong? The carnivore corruption started in 2017 by funding from the good old boys, woo wee, for that great A Angus prime beef. And if you were in those zero carb carnivore communities beforehand, you know, they were going for five, 10 years, but they were much smaller. And I don't know when the keto movement was corrupted specifically, you know, I would imagine perhaps even over 10 years ago now, but now keto has hit the mainstream and stuck because these companies have been able to set up the infrastructure to make and market keto products. Uh, the carnivore diet was actually brought mainstream as well, but it didn't really stick. Same with the paleo diet, you know, it didn't stick too much. And that has partially to do with the beliefs behind the diet. If you have a simple message behind the carnivore diet, if you have a simple belief and ideology behind the paleo diet, people tend to stick to those simple things and not buy your garbage products. And I actually remember that paleo movement being super duper popular around like 2012, 2013, 2014. Then it fell off a cliff like completely crashed, I guess, you know, the corporations, as I said, you know, weren't selling their products too well. Uh, but now that you guys have an understanding of these diets, what components are correct and what it takes to be healthy, you can take bits and pieces from everywhere, nutrition, diet, health related, and form your own lifestyle. The further understanding of vitamins and minerals uh, that you can develop allows you to dial in on specific foods and supplements to become an ideal version of yourself. You know, I was never a brainiac with how much of this to take, how much of that to take. You know, this was my base of starting. I looked at what diets were out there. I took bits and pieces from each one. And then as I started, you know, studying further and further and further, and you know, it takes, you know, four, five, six, seven years. You know, that's why I didn't start my YouTube channel until I was dieting for, you know, at least four years. I had to build up a base of knowledge. You know, if someone hasn't been following a diet for at least four or five years, or been heavily involved in personal nutrition research for that period of time, they, they have no 
reason to be giving anyone else advice, uh, to be honest. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Let me know how you like this. Uh, leave any video ideas you would like to see down in the comments below. I got too many, too many ideas to do and uh, too little time. I, mean, I could even do two videos a day, but uh, at this point with, you know, everything going on, you know, would it even be worth it? Uh, but you guys know how to support me. Uh, definitely check out the Warrior Bar. We just launched that uh, this week on Frankie's Free Range Meat. Ice cream, meal replacement, survival bar, super healthy. Is it keto? Is it carnivore? Is it paleo? It's like a mix of all three things. Uh, you can also go to Oregon Supplements. We have Frankie's Naturals. Uh, of course, I said the Warrior Bar. That's on Frankie's Free Range Meat. You can go to frank definocom for one-on-one -on -one diet and nutrition consultations. And if you guys haven't read my book, The Ancestral Indigenous Diet is available on Amazon. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night.